Hello there everybody, Sam's Trains here, welcome back to the railway and welcome to another review. Today I'm looking at some brand new models from Acura Scale. A month or two ago I looked at my first ever Acura Scale locomotive, and in fact it was Acura Scale's first ever locomotive as well. It was the Class 55 Deltic and it was absolutely awesome. But of course Acura Scale also produced quite a good range of rolling stock, and people have been asking me to start covering some of that, although I haven't looked at any so far. So I've decided to start with a brand new product which has only just been released and that product is this, the all new Acura Scale Children Wagon Packs. And these are packs of three children wagons which are from the very early days of the railways. Early 1800s, freight wagons, absolutely tremendous to start seeing this sort of model produced. There is precious little like this on the market despite so many pre-grouping locomotives being available now. So this is really, really exciting to see. Now, as I understand it, these wagons are only available in packs of three. I don't think you can buy them singularly at the moment. And each pack costs £44.99, and that comes out at around £15.99 per wagon. Now, that is the RRP, and that is also the retailer price. So if I pop an affiliate link in the description for you, that's the price you will get. It's quite good, I think, because a lot of manufacturers set artificially high RRPs, which they then pretend to discount at the retailer, so you think you're getting a better price, but actually you're not. I think this is just a lot simpler, isn't it? The RRP is the price you pay. It's a good price in the first place, so it's not like we're not getting a discount and that sucks. So yeah, it's just much simpler, isn't it? Now, in terms of value for money, because there is so little on the market to compare these two, similar products, that is, it's hard to say what the value is like. The only other product that seems remotely similar to this would be the Hornby Stevenson's Rocket Coal Wagons, which appear to be slightly modified Stevenson's Rocket Tenders, which have just been painted brown. Okay, so not particularly well-researched or detailed wagons then, yet the price of those is so much higher, at £76.99 for a pack of three, which comes out at £25.66 each. So that's going on £10 more per wagon. Absolutely crazy. So even though there's not that much to compare these two, going on what we've got, the value for money here seems to be quite good particularly when you consider that these models have been independently researched and purpose-built to be accurate children wagons. Well, at least that's the idea, because I've not had this box open yet. We're going to take a look at this together. So let's take a look, the Acura Scale Childrens. Hello there, can you still see me? Well, this is going to be weird because I, I know you're going to be able to see my face as I say all this, but never mind. So I've only ever seen photos and videos of these models so far, and it's always difficult to gauge the size of a model when you're just looking at pictures and such. And you've got to think with these being early 1800 wagons, they're going to be tiny, aren't they? I'm, in fact, I'm expecting to be surprised at how tiny these are. Yet you wouldn't really think it looking at the box. It's quite a large bit of packaging here. It's got some nice diagrams on the front, not necessarily representing the models in the box. Uh, it says elsewhere on the box that these three wagons are representing the progression of the children over the years. To find out what I've actually got in my pack, we look at the end of the box on the label, which shows that this is the North Eastern Railway P1. It is the children's triple pack. It's a Curoscale 2800A. They have included the running numbers there, and that's a good sign, isn't it? Each wagon has a different running number, and the livery is NER Era 2. So presumably the children's in here will be a little bit later on. So this, let's take this shiny thing off. Goodbye, I'll see you on the next video. And we've got the very nice presentation box right here with not much on the outside of it besides what I've already showed you. So let's lift the lid. I'm really, really excited about this. It's pre-grouping rolling stock. <laughs> yep, I wasn't wrong. They are absolutely teeny wagons. My only regret is that I didn't buy a second pack of these because <laughs> I would love a few more, if anything. But still, let's have a look. So how do we go about this? Can I pull this whole thing out? Yes, I can. And there's actually some wadge of paperwork here, which I want to look at. Oh, man. So this is why people are falling in love with Acura Scale. Just look at this. We've got this rich photograph on beautiful glossy paper. 
which shows one of the old children's as it looks now. There's a massive prototype history right there, so if you want to pause and read that, feel free to. I will give you a little bit of history in just a second, though. Man, look at this. These are small and relatively inexpensive wagons, and yet look at all of this material. What is this even on about? It's more, it's more prototype information. They've written absolutely loads. And the diagrams appear to show the three different types of wagon that Acura Scale have produced, and also all of the different detail that goes into them. And it does seem to be considerably different between each variation which is fascinating, so that's cool. Uh, on the back end, oh, look at this, more photographs, a wealth of information, general information here, so that's all useful. One thing I was wondering about was the couplings, and the couplings do appear to be NEM mounted, but they seem to have uh, sort of chains on them, and then possibly magnets to couple them together, so we'll have to take a closer look at that in just a moment. Presumably there will be some sort of regular tension lock coupling involved, so that you can couple this to other locomotives, or perhaps there will come with extra couplings that you can plug into your locomotives and then be completely realistic across the whole train. I don't know, let's just find out. So, I'm gonna pop the front of this packaging off. Ooh, this is a little bit awkward. Just conscious of uh, the sudden snaps touching these models and hopefully not damaging them, all right. Well, maybe not, they are quite nicely wrapped. So let's start, I mean, is there anything else on the back? No, so it is just this pack of accessories here. And um, a little bit concerningly, there's just a single set of couplings in there. So presumably the wagons themselves already have the couplings fitted. Let's have a look at this coupling. I'm actually gonna get it out. So yeah, they are NEM couplings with, mm, some magnets sticking them together in the middle there. I don't think those should be there. Are they spare magnets, perhaps? Let's put those to one side. So yeah, real chains fitted to the NEM couplings. And uh, then you've got the little magnets in the plastic casing there, which hold them together. Now that is a great solution, isn't it? Because I've already mentioned the Hornby Stevenson's rocket range. Well, you, you had to actually manually hook the fake plastic chains onto the wagons, which was not a pleasant process by any stretch. So this is just awesome. You just snap them together and they work. That's great. Okay, so I just hope that I've got some more of these couplings because obviously a single set is not going to be very useful, but I presume they're just fitted to the models. So I think they're largely going to be the same, these three models that I've got, except for the decoration, which will involve different running numbers. So I don't think it matters too much, which I go for first. Ah, they're in a little sort of sleeve, which has been taped up. Okay. Well, there it is. What a tiny little piece of work this is. But also what a detailed piece of work this clearly is. We've got even the wheels look, the wheels look magnificent. The bodies are complete with quite a few separately fitted parts in spite of the model size, and we'll look at that in just a second. But even more interestingly, look, there is no NEM pocket underneath here. Uh, we have the chain link couplings, for want of a better term, the magnetic couplings, uh, pre-fitted in a very fine way, which leads me to assume that the couplings I found in the accessories bag are for a locomotive, so that they can use the same couplings here. So it is a proprietary coupling solution for which you will need these accessory couplings um, to actually you know, make use of. They have only provided two of these couplings then per set of three, but that means that each set of three can have a locomotive and perhaps a brake van or something on the back, whatever you wanted to do. So if you've got that per set of three wagons, I think that should always be enough, shouldn't it, surely? So that's pretty good. Right, let me put this down. Let's have a look at some of the other ones. Let's pull the tape off. They do seem to be quite well packed. Um, obviously, you're going to want to be careful with them. But no, they don't seem too bad. They're not particularly heavy wagons, and I suppose that does make sense because of how tiny they are. Uh, but the chassis here do appear to be die-cast, so made of metal. That's really nice to see. Uh, the wheels, they're not free-rolling particularly. No, um, clearly there was no opportunity to make pinpoint bearings with these because the axle boxes are inside on the axle 
and as you can see the wheels just sort of snap onto the chassis there so yeah not a particularly free rolling solution uh, but they're also not dreadfully stiff either so i suppose that's fair enough okay so that's children the second let's pull out the last one then and see what this one's like uh, not going to be dreadfully different yet again but i think we ought to have a close look at each and there it is yep yeah, that's the third running number then and this one's number 2216 yeah, lovely. There's some great detail on here, which I am going to show you in just a second. But for now, let's have a little bit of background on the Chaldrons in real life, and they are quite interesting. The very name Chaldron is interesting because it comes not from the manufacturer or designer of these wagons, but it was actually a standard, and I use the word standard loosely, unit of substance, usually coal, which was used from the 13th century until 1963 when the unit was abolished. So at one time, a chaldron of coal would be the legal limit for a horse-drawn coal wagon, as any more weight than that was thought to potentially damage roadways. Railway wagons such as these would carry a chaldron of coal measuring around 10 foot long and 6 feet high. The chaldron rail vehicles that we see here were built from around 1820 onwards, so right at the beginning of railway history, but they did apparently have origins even before that. As we can see from Acuroscale's range, these wagons were built to slightly varying standards, but they all followed the same general shape and proportions. As well as coal, these would be used to transport brick, timber, stone and quite a bit more. The number of these wagons built was in the tens of thousands and they were in use until the mid-1910s on the railways in some places and the Chaldrons could have been seen in Cornwall, Leeds, Scotland as well as Northumberland and Durham where they were mainly seen. In coal fields though, these wagons lasted much, much longer than this, some of them still being used as late as 1978. So the scope of these models is really quite tremendous. So there they are, the brand new Acura Scale Children wagons, up close and personal for you. And overall, I think these are really quite awesome. I just can't get over how great it is to actually see something like this on the market ready to run. I mean, who would have thought it? Who would have expected it? And here they are, not only existing, but also existing to a really, really high standard, which is just great to see, and we're going to get into that in just a second. Quite obviously though, these are very, very small and light models for what they cost, and light is certainly the word because each one comes in at 9.58 grams. And that means that the entire pack of three Chaldrons, in terms of weight, is about the same as one and a half 10 pound Oxford Rail open wagon. So in terms of the amount of material involved in these wagons, the value for money here doesn't seem too good at £44.99 per pack. However, I'm still going to go ahead and say that the value for money here is very reasonable, because while the amount of material involved is absolutely tiny, the level of complexity is really quite monstrous, because here are three wagons, and tiny as they are, they have a massive amount of detail on them, including separately fitted chains, not just one or two, but you've got the ones on the ends here, you've got the ones that are fitted to the couplings, you've got the chains just above the brake rod here, all of them real chains, not just moulded effects, and actually separately fitted. The chassis, as I say, are actually made of metal, and that shows really good intent from the manufacturer, and quite frankly, if they were not metal, I'd dread to think what the weight of these would be, because even with those die-cast components, 9.58 grams, that is not a lot of weight for a wagon. But like I say, it certainly could have been worse. Right, we're going to talk much more about the level of detail in just a moment, but I'm going to start with a couple of minor criticisms. First of all, don't be fooled by the size of these wagons. Don't think they're so basic that they're going to be dead robust, because as I've already said, there are lots of very small parts, and some of them are actually quite fragile. The main one for me would be the brake rod and the whole brake pad assembly, which is all sort of connected together and then connected to the model with a very, very tiny contact area. And as you can see, they are very, very fragile and loose. So a word of warning about those, because when you get these out of the box, your fingers are going to touch them if you're not aware, and you certainly don't want to catch them and rip them off, because that would not take a lot of force, I don't think. The second thing is that the couplings, frankly, are not very good. 
They look great, they look very realistic, and I don't blame Acura Scale for not wanting to fit large, ugly tension lock couplings, because that would just be ridiculous and it would spoil the model. But still, the couplings that Acura Scale have put on here are not practical, because when you disconnect them like this, the magnets have a tendency to sort of face backwards because they're attracted by the chain, which is also metal, and possibly even parts of the chassis, which are also metal. So that when you bring the wagons together to attempt a coupling, um, a lot of the time they don't couple together and you have to sort of pull the couplings into roughly the right position, which is not easily done because they are quite fragile. And when both of them are dangling down, will that do it now? Oh, yeah. Then it will work. So that's not ever so practical is it if you're trying to operate a realistic railway ideally you shouldn't have to intervene in order to couple and uncouple rolling stock uh, that said uncoupling is obviously quite a bit nicer than it would be with the tension locks and certainly if you're careful with the wagons and you don't sort of jostle them around too much the couplings can dangle down like this and then recoupling is fine but really, as soon as you start sort of lifting up the models and turning them over in your hands and such, the couplings will just get stuck. And then you will have to intervene before they can be used again. But yeah, the couplings are not a fantastic solution, but I honestly can't think of what they could have done better with those. Just bear in mind, they're not absolutely perfect. Right, decoration and paintwork. The finish on these looks great. There is definitely a quality finish to the bodywork. The decoration is obviously relatively simplistic as per the prototypes, but the printed detail is absolutely fine. As you can see, it looks wonderful. In fact, the wheels are awesome and very unique looking and the detailing on these wheels is incredibly fine. I mean, these spokes are just such a cool design, aren't they? Really, really awesome. And then let's go over the detail, shall we, properly. So each chassis has quite a number of separately fitted parts, as you can see particularly around the dumb buffers. And uh, obviously this is before the time of sprung buffers or anything like that. Uh, so you've got just these blocks instead of buffers, which is again, another sign of the times, isn't it? The underframes are fully detailed as well. So it's kind of like a 360 degree model in terms of realism, because also if you look down into the top of the hopper, there is detail on the inner walls and also in the base and the base is actually the top of the chassis that you're looking at there. So yeah, fully realistic from any angle, which is really, really cool. And then obviously the molded detail is great as well. All of the rivets and the different supports, they're all very nice and crisply molded, which looks great. So overall, I think these are quite expensive, obviously, yeah, fairly pricey for such small and light wagons, but I do think that that price is largely justified in the complexity and the number of separately fitted parts and also, for the most part, the quality of the models, which isn't too bad. They are quite fragile and quite fiddly to an extent as well because of the couplings, but none of this is a deal breaker for me. So overall, very impressed, very glad to have something like this in the collection, but also very curious to see what these are going to look like in action. So let's get them onto the railway, let's get them coupled to an early locomotive, and let's see what they look like. So here is my test setup then. I have selected a locomotive that is largely correct in terms of era, but not so much in terms of livery, so apologies for that. We've got the Chaldrons themselves, which are set up, and then a less appropriate brake van, which I've put there purely just for something else to couple up. Um, the, both the Loco and the brake van have got the magnetic coupling things fitted to them, so we're going to find out how they couple together in a practical scenario in just a second. First question though, how free rolling are the Chaldrons? And the answer is not very. In fact, they are appallingly stiff. I tried each of them and the results were pretty much the same. Now, yes, these are light wagons, so they're not really gonna be that difficult to pull. But when you think about the sort of locomotive that is gonna be hauling these, you really don't want stiff rolling stock. It's supposed to be free rolling, isn't it? So at this sort of price, perhaps some sort of better bearing would have been good to see because like I say, yeah, they are very stiff. Now I did wonder whether it was just the extreme lightweight and therefore lack of inertia that was causing this apparent drag. So to get over that, I popped 10 grams into the top of one of them and I did not notice any difference at all. 
And for comparison, here is uh, just a random cheap Oxford wagon. Similar sort of weight with the 10 grams added to the children. And yeah, you can see it's much, much better. The extra drag also begs the question, what sort of force do these couplings require to be overcome? Well, I tested that. I put two of the NEM couplings onto some wagons and tested it, and the result was 0.3 newtons. That is the point at which the couplings failed. So I think, you know, for small trains of children's, that's going to be absolutely fine. If you're putting larger trains of them together, you might get issues, particularly when you start accelerating. Locomotives such as the Backman 08 or perhaps the Hornby B12, just to give a couple of examples, will have no problem at all in overcoming that amount of force. So do bear that in mind. For larger trains, they're not going to be suitable. And for those thinking of maybe using something like this for coaches and other rolling stock, be aware they're not going to be strong enough really for larger rolling stock. But let's see how they actually perform practically. So I'm going to reverse old copper knob up. I'm going to push all of the children's together and then pull forward and we'll see how many of them actually do couple. So let's do this. Oh God, <laughs> that was sudden. Right, pull forwards. So I think we've sort of got the first one that they need pulling apart. There we go. So they are coupled correctly. Um, the second one, no. Can you see this? Is this in shot? Yeah. And the third one, no. So not altogether a very good result. I'm going to use a screwdriver with an end that attracts magnets to see if I can sort this out without having to take the wagons off the track. So I'm just going to see if I can attract the magnet and pull it down into position, um, which I sort of can. There we go. It's also sort of relinquishing your grip on the magnet in a way that doesn't make it spring back to the position where it's no good. Okay, so I think that will do it now. Let's see if we can couple those. Did we get it? Yeah. Um, again, we need to pull them taut though. Hmm, I think that one's a bit twisted. Right, so I think you're getting a flavor really of what sort of couplings these are. Not what I would call practical. Uh, they, they look fantastic, and like I say, I'm sure they are the best solution, but uh, they're not great, and they're not sort of much, much better than the Hornby ones as I thought they were going to be. Right, I think we're there. Let's do that again. Try and be a bit more steady on the loco this time. Yeah, again, also not realistic in the way that they couple. And then again, they do need some intervention because, look, that's just not right. But if I stretch them apart like that, then that looks better. Okay, let's go back and, well, no, let's not go back. Let's pull the loco forward. This brake van has some, I think, sanding pipes, which are made of metal, and it's just relentlessly attracting the magnet to them. So this one's going to be harder, I reckon. But let's try it. Yeah, 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 that one's dangling now. Okay, let's go and couple. So, um, to be honest, a big train of these is going to be a nightmare, isn't it? It's not going to be fun. Go on. I heard a click. All right, but again, we're going to have to stretch these apart because they're too close. Okay, you see that? That's gone. Okay, so I think we're now coupled. <laughs> What happens if we go forwards now? Are they going to stretch apart nicely? Oh, Loco needs a push. Yeah, sort of. Okay, right, well let's get going at a fair old speed then and just see how they get on around the track forwards to start with. Okay. So here we go. I'm not expecting to see any trouble around curves. Let's just have a look. No, that's absolutely perfect. And of course, the reason these are going to be so good around curves is that the coupling magnets are obviously fitted to the end of real chains, which are very flexible and free to move around. So really, they're going to be able to tolerate any sort of curve you can throw at them. And because they're not coupled too close together, the chains are relatively long. Again, you're going to be able to run these over some pretty tight curves before those dub buffers are going to start contacting each other. So. In the forwards direction, this looks perfectly okay. 
but because of the flexibility in those coupling chains, because they're not just, let's say, molded plastic chains, which are rigid, like the Hornby ones were, obviously when you go into reverse, the wagons are gonna to push together, the buffers could start to touch each other, and I think you could start to see derailments. I think the larger the train, the worse this could be. But with just the three wagons I've got here, let's give that a try. Let's do a couple of laps in reverse, and let's see what happens. Okay. I'm taking it steady, trying not to go too quick. Things don't look quite right already, do they? And they haven't actually <laughs> been over a curve yet. Yeah, they're off. So I'm going to get them to the other side of the bookcase, I think, and we'll put them back on and try again. Okay, here we go again. We've got some curves coming up, of course. Right, so again, the one coupled to the loco looks to be at a funny angle, doesn't it? Getting a bit further this time though, yeah, they're, they're definitely still on the track at the moment. Yeah, still looking quite good. Let's see if we can get a full lap. Okay, so it's not as bad as I thought, that's a complete lap there, and they are actually still on. I don't think it's ideal because, like I say, you've got, at the best, buffers pushing against each other, dumb buffers, <laughs> which are sort of square-shaped. Uh, so with larger trains of children, you're definitely going to get issues. But with my three, it looks like I can just about get away with it. But let's try it against some points, see how that works. Okay, let's throw these points open then and have a look. Yeah, I'm surprised at how well it works, to be honest. Yeah, it is... Quite impressive that the wagons just sort of shoved up against each other as they are uh, they don't have a problem forwards is always going to be fine I think but if I just pause across the points you can see how awkward some of this interfacing is I mean a loco with a standard buffer beam and standard buffers that's just like a collision incident isn't it the children's themselves, those dumb buffers on these second radius points, are getting very, very close to touching each other. Um, but I'm not seeing buffer lock or issues like that. And look at this, it's basically crashed into this brake van. Again, this brake van's not necessarily designed for the children's, but it just gives you an idea of how they will interface with typical rolling stock. But again, they're not actually derailing. They did derail initially when I first started them off uh, in reverse but I've not seen it since. So I'm very, very pleasantly surprised by that. Oh, Loco's cut out. Oh, no, it hasn't. Okay, cool. Let's have some ratings then for the new Acura Scale Children Wagons. And overall, yeah, I think I can be really positive about these, particularly where the level of detail is concerned. So the molder detail is tremendous. The finish and the decoration can't be faulted. That all looks fantastic. Really impressive number of separately fitted parts, including real chains, fine detail, and even intricate interior and underframe detail, which you don't always see with ready-to-run rolling stock. The performance lets these down a little bit. In fact, I've docked two stars for the performance here. First of all, because they are chronically stiff, at least my three were when I tested them on the Gordons Hill rolling test, not what I would call free rolling wagons. Also, the couplings are not dreadfully convenient. It's not as simple as just putting them on the track and having them coupled together because the magnets get attracted to chains and other details that stop them from working properly. Also, there is the potential for these to have derailments and stuff like that in reverse. I didn't see that with my examples really, but I do think that is something that you could see with perhaps larger trains of children's and on different layouts, perhaps with more points and curves to contend with. But yeah, I didn't actually see that with mine, so no points docked. The quality for me is pretty good. I've given it four star. There's a lot to celebrate here. The build quality is quite obviously high. I saw no visible glue marks, despite the high number of separately fitted parts. They've got die cast chassis, which is really great as well, particularly for such a small model, and they definitely needed it for the stability. 
It loses one mark for quality because of some of those separately fitted parts, mainly the brake assemblies, very, very fragile. You've got to be careful with those. And also the lack of any proper bearings on the axles, which might have contributed to the high drag of these models. Neither of these are massive complaints though, so it just loses one star. The RRP and the retailer price is one and the same this time at £44.99 and that makes the value okay in my opinion, in fact possibly better than we're used to seeing. So I've given it four star, they're obviously not in bargain territory which would be five star but for the complexity, for the amount of research that has clearly gone into these models, I don't think the price is bad at all to be quite honest with you, particularly compared with other similar or not so similar products. I say not so similar because obviously the ones I'm thinking of have not been properly researched, they're not all that realistic and they're almost certainly not going to be anything close to this despite being not that far off double in price. So yeah, value not a problem. Overall then that's a pretty good score of 8.51 out of 10. Let's put these into the logbook, they are in 4th place, so definitely top 5, above the Oxford Pilchard and below the Backman 55 ton hoppers. Yeah, they are great. If you need rolling stock from this era, this is a great, great option. So there you have it then folks, very slight performance issues aside, these are awesome wagons. They are so incredibly detailed and they do look great as they run along. The couplings, while not particularly practical, they do look extremely realistic, possibly better than anything else we've seen in 00 gauge. So that's definitely worth recognizing, I think. And hey, the slight issues I've seen, you might decide to just blame my carpet for them. That's what some people like to do whenever I find a problem. So if you're one of those, go ahead. Clearly that's not realistic. Taking these off the floor is not going to magically make them roll more freely or couple more conveniently. So that's not a realistic excuse really. But overall, yeah, no major complaints. I am thinking of getting some more of these, possibly a, a different variation so that I can look at a different body style because I love pioneering and pre-grouping locomotives. And like I say, there's very little on offer in terms of rolling stock for that sort of loco. And this is a really good option. In fact, the best option I've seen so far, definitely. So let's hope to see more like this in the future. Let's hope to see some more locos to go with them. And let's hope to see this sort of quality and detail on Acura Scales products going forwards. And I'm pretty sure we're going to on all counts. So thank you for watching. Comment down below. Let me know what you think. And I'll catch you very, very soon for some more videos. All right. Cheers, folks. Take care.